This is Lillian Tu coming to you from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And we are in the middle, exactly in the middle, of the Flying Star Feng Shui online program. Um, it's been great fun talking to you about this wonderful complex formula, which I'm trying very hard to make as easy and as simple as possible, and more important, to make it very practical so that you will be able to use the formula. I mean, it's very important that we understand we are living in a modern era. So this is Flying Star for Modern Living. And it's very important also to understand that today there are far more energy lines uh, surrounding us. You know, we are actually much, much more savvy when it comes to technological breakthroughs that deal with quantum physics that deal with the energies that surround us. And as you know, I am a great pro uh, uh, supporter of spiritual feng shui as well, because I know that actually these energies that exist, exist alongside us can indeed be subdued or enhanced or controlled uh, with the mind, you know, with the power of the mind that we are born with. So therefore, as a microcosm of the universe, when we learn and study something like flying star feng shui, uh, this represents what the ancient wisdom sages, what the old masters, what the old enlightened masters in ancient China put together about what they discovered uh, regarding energy. And energy actually has got various dimensions. The first dimension is the space dimension. The second dimension is the time dimension, which we are dealing with when we practice flying star feng shui. And of course, the third dimension is the spiritual dimension. Now, all three dimensions are very, very important. And we should actually be on top of all three dimensions of feng shui. Now, time dimension of feng shui is something that, uh, that reflects the dynamism of the practice of feng shui. And I've always said to people, what is very important when you practice feng shui, either for yourself or for your family or for your friends, or if you are practicing feng shui as a consultant going to other people's homes, you've got to adopt a very altruistic intention, a motivation that actually is meant for you to um, get the greatest success possible. And this motivation has to do with the intention of actually really benefiting the person's feng shui that you're doing. I have found that the good intention, the kind intention, the genuine intention is actually very powerful, far more powerful than we realize. So therefore, that is my motivation in putting through this program for you to benefit from in the comfort of your own home. Flying Star Feng Shui is not difficult to practice. One of the key issues that we must get right is that we have to learn how to superimpose the numbers of the Flying Star chart that we have selected as being the most suitable for our house, as reflecting the energies of our house. So the first thing you do is you've got to make sure that the Flying Star chart that is you are looking at and that you are analyzing it is indeed the flying star chart that applies to your abode, to your house, to your apartment, to your office, using always the facing direction. So at the front, facing outwards in the center is the facing palace. And at the back is the sitting palace. So we always start with the facing palace and the sitting palace. Now how do you superimpose the three numbers, the central number, the central period number, the water star number, and the mountain star number, this collection of three numbers in every grid, how do we superimpose these numbers onto the different, different sectors or different parts, different corners of your home? Now, basically, I can divide into three major parts, you know, three major methods. One is the equal grid method. So you divide your house into nine equal grids and then you superimpose the number onto each grid. The second method is what we call the pie chart method. It's like a pizza. You cut it in the shape of a pizza or a cake. 
Mm? The pie chart method actually cuts the space of the house like a cake. So what you do is you superimpose a circle into your space, into your home, into the entire space, and then you imagine that it's like a pizza and you cut it into eight equal Sorry, yes, into eight equal pieces. Now, of course, if you do the pie chart method, the center grid just simply disappears because the center is just a point. And the third method, the third method is based on what I call the walls and the rooms of the house, how the house was actually built up, the layout that is inherent in any home. And that actually is the most practical method, I feel, because the feng shui of any abode is affected by the way the walls have been erected, by the way the layout of the home has been organized, has been arranged. The pie chart method is very popular amongst feng shui masters from Hong Kong. That is why if you consult a feng shui master from Hong Kong, usually they use the pie chart method. They reflect the round circular low bar, the compass. And actually, frankly, I do not like the method because I feel that the center of the house, the numbers that lie at the center of the chart is very important. And therefore, we should not allow the center of the house to just disappear into a dot. It is still a square. And also, I like the idea of the nine grids, except that I don't like this equal grid uh, approach for the simple reason that just as no house is perfectly square or perfectly rectangular, because all homes are built in such a way that you will have a little bit missing here, a little bit missing, unless you actually tell your architect you have a say in the way your house is built. Most times, homes are built, apartments are built to suit the layer of the land, to suit the size of the land, the shape of the land. So often we don't have that much control over the shape of our homes or the, or the size of the rooms in the home. So it's been built. We buy the house or the apartment ready-made. They have been developed by property developers, which is why for the last 15 years, you know, when I've been active in feng shui, I've done a lot of behind-the-scenes work with property developers. I talk to them because many of them are my friends, and I tell them it doesn't cost you anything to build homes with good feng shui, and I give them some free tutorials and tuition and explain to them some key principles, which is what I'm doing with you now. As long as you follow some key principles, you can't go very far. Are wrong. It's not that difficult to practice good feng shui, believe me. Do not feel that it is something that is way beyond you. Just have to think things through a little bit and you can get it right.